Hey guys, Glenn Ocean here. Let's put together your kitesurfing board in this video. Your kitesurfing board came with a probably bunch of a hardware, so let's mount it. Let's put it on the board together. For the process, we're gonna need some tools and supplies. When it comes to tool, we're gonna need the whole screwdriver. <laughs> That's pretty much all. Uh, this is my favorite one. You see this, uh, the T-shaped handle, simply because it gives you a lot of leverage. Especially if you are a lady, then uh, this is probably the way to go. Now, when it comes to the tips on a screwdriver, especially like this one has replaceable tips, uh, you probably would need a Phillips, and uh, that Phillips should be the number three. It's usually the biggest one in the set. Now, the reason for this is, uh, well, first of all, it should fit snug in, uh, in a screw head. Not, not this one. This one over here. The other reason is uh, this. These screws are made of stainless steel, and uh, stainless steel is not magnetic. Like, uh, if you're used to holding a screw with a, screw, a screwdriver like this, you see it, it kind of stays put, it doesn't fall off. It's not going to be the case with, uh, with these screws made of stainless steel, so it's not, there is no catch, right? They don't, they don't hold up. And uh, if the fit is not perfect, if there is wobb wobbling, you see what happens? The screw is not staying uh, with, the screw, uh, with the screwdriver. So you'll be better off if the uh, tip is uh, fitting perfectly inside of the screw head. Like this one is number three, and the, the screw is designed just right, just for that size. Now, when it comes to materials, um, I, I like to use some kind of a padding between the board and whatever the board is sitting on. You can use um, a towel, a rag, a carpet. My favorite one is uh, a yoga mat, simply because uh, the board doesn't slide. It kind of stays put, stays in one place on the yoga mat. My girlfriend is probably going to kill me when she finds out that I'm using her yoga mat for this, but that's later. Now, a couple of no-nos when it comes to putting the board together. First of all, do not put it together on a sandy beach because uh, sand will get uh, between the parts, it will get in, the, in threads and it's not going to help you anyhow. In fact, it may even loosen up the connection between, uh, between the parts, between the hardware parts and uh, it may even damage or destroy the threads, especially when it comes to the plastic counterpart on the fin. If sand gets in there and you, you try to drive the screw in the, in the opening over here, you can easily damage the thread. You may end up buying a new set of fins. Another no-no is uh, do not assemble your board on a hard surfaces like uh, asphalt or concrete. You don't want to scratch the, the board. You don't want to scratch the plastic uh, uh, coating simply because of this. Uh, uh, boards are made of, basically the, today they're made of two materials, either it's a fiberglass or a wooden core. When it comes to wooden core, what happens to the wood when it gets exposed to the water? The fibers of the wood begin to kind of expand and they start to fall apart and uh, the, whole, the whole board can warp if uh, it's exposed, if the wooden core is exposed heavily to the water. Now, when, when it comes to manufacturing the board, any board uh, with a wooden core, the wooden core is usually protected from the water by multiple layers of uh, different plastics, paints, polyurethane, and you name it. So let's keep it that way, okay? Let's keep that wooden core protected. Let's not scratch the surface. Especially it is the case when the bottom of the board is not flat, when it has a structure, when it has some grooves in it. And another no-no is do not use any power tools. Do not use a screw gun or power drill to drive the screws uh, in their positions, in their places, simply because, uh, like in this example over here, fins are plastic, they're made of plastic, and the screw is made of metal. If you over-tighten it, Usually plastic gives, okay? Metal wins, and you can damage, uh, you can damage the, uh, the fins if you over-tighten it with a power tool. And when it comes to mounting foot straps, uh, the counterpart to the screw will be metal as well, but it's a pressed metal, so it's soft, and uh, it's really easy to over-tighten and damage it as well. And those screws, those, uh, those nuts that are actually built into the board, they're impossible to replace. Well, actually, <laughs> let me rephrase. They're very difficult to replace, and you don't want to mess with that. So be gentle, use your hand, and uh, tighten it up to the point where you feel that you're not breaking it just yet. As we go through the whole process, some of the topics, some of the steps will be really easy, like, duh, who doesn't know this? And some other topics will be more like, um, could you repeat that? So, let's go through the steps. First of all, when you're looking at the board, when you're receiving the board, the first question is, where is the top, where is the bottom? Well, this one is really simple. Uh, usually, not usually, um, the board is bowed to one side. You see, it's not the lens, it's not the camera, it's actually the board is being parabolic, okay? It has some curvature to it. So the side of the board that actually is bowing out should be pointing downwards, and uh, the tips of the board, tips of the board should be pointing upwards. 
it's probably possible to write the board upside down, okay? I'm sure some experienced people and just uh, for the kicks, for fun, they could try to, to write the board upside down, but it will be a little bit challenging because when the tips of the board are pointing downwards, as soon as you hit a little chop, a little wave, the, the board is going to take a nose dive, okay? It's going to turn into a submarine and you'll trip over. Okay, we don't want that to happen, so position the board so the tips are pointing upwards. In this case, if you hit a wind chop, if you hit a little wave, then the board will bounce off of it and you'll continue to ride. There is another way to tell the top of the board from the bottom. Is, uh, it's really simple. If you look at the bottom of the board, you can see that it's really flat. There are no holes, there are no openings over here, especially in the middle part. There are openings in the corners, okay? There are four fins, there will be four fins installed on the board, so there are openings for those. But middle is completely flat, there are, there are no holes in here. If you look at the top of the board, you can see that there, are, there is a bunch of holes. There's a bunch of openings uh, for the handle and for the foot straps. Okay, that was rather a simple question. Now, the next question could be a little bit difficult. The question is, which side is the left? Which side is the right side? And if you look at the bottom of the board, it's impossible to tell left from right by looking at the bottom. Okay, because all, the whole board is symmetrical. It's symmetrical in both dimensions, left, lengthwise and across the board. So there are like four quadrants over here and they all are identical. So how can you tell? Usually board doesn't have a sticker. When you open up the package, there is no sticker saying this is left, this is right. So how do we figure it out? What I'm going to do, I'm going to run a little experiment uh, to, for demonstration purposes. You don't have to repeat this after me. And I'm gonna need a, a ruler and uh, an erasable, erasable marker. Don't use a permanent one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line in the center of the board. For this, I'm gonna find a spot that has, uh, let's see, 14 inches in the cross section. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark the middle. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side, turning this way. So if it's a 14 inches across the board, then the middle is at seven. And uh, now I'm going to run a line from one dot to the other. There we go. Just making sure it's erasable. Okay, Whew, it is. Now ruler goes out of the way. And now if we look at the board, you can see that uh, the two openings over here, two openings in the middle, the center ones, the line actually ran straight through them. And these two openings will be used for the handle, okay? Now, there is a group of openings over here. This board is really simple and trivial, so there are only two openings here. It could be three, sometimes even four. And you see this group is, uh, where's my marker? This group is uh, slightly off the center. It's kind of moved in that direction. Now, this group is off the center in the opposite direction. If we look over here, this group of holes is, I don't know if you can see that, probably not, but trust me, it's moved uh, in that direction, and this group is shifted to this side. Now, what does it tell us? Whatever the direction the innermost set of uh, holes is shifted to, this is where the toe side is. Okay, and uh, these openings, the outmost openings, they're usually shifted towards the heel side. Okay, so that's the clue. That's the only way to tell left side from the right. So now this board, if this is the toe side, then it should be facing away from me. That's where my toes will point, and the heel side is going to be pointing that way. Now, as to the reason why these holes are slightly off the center, it's really simple. If they were sitting on the same line, on the center line, then uh, when it's time to mount the uh, pads, pads would be sitting perpendicular to the board. And this is not really comfortable. Usually we prefer to keep our toes apart and heels a little bit closer. And uh, as I move the pads in this direction, you see this side of the pad moves forward just where this arrow is pointing, and uh, this side of the pad is moving backwards towards the heel side, okay? So simply put, uh, these uh, holes are off the center just to keep the toes slightly apart to have a little bit of an angle. Now let's mount foot straps or foot pads, foot straps, foot pads, whatever you call it. Um, so this one is, uh, let's figure it out. Is it the left or is it the right one? Okay, usually when you look at the shoe, when you look at the slippers or uh, shoes in general, the uh, toe side is usually wider. 
Well, it's not always the case when it comes to kitesurfing foot straps. Like this one over here, let's look at the back. You see, this side over here is narrower than uh, this side. Yet, this is the heel side and this is the toe side. See, the weight you can tell uh, toe side from the heel side is usually the toe side has a little ledge, a little ridge. So basically you can, you can <laughs> I don't know if we can, we're not apes, but uh, you can hold on to them. You can kind of uh, grab onto this ledge with your toes. Okay, and the heel side is usually flat. It's more flat so you can move your heel left and right. So you can, it can wiggle a little bit. So this is my, uh, this is my right foot strap goes to my right and this is the left one it goes to my left now let's mount those straps and the first question is uh, right here we have three openings on one side and three openings on the other side now which ones should you use well it really depends the answer is it really depends like this combination is not original I mean the board is made by Cabrina and this one the, the foot strap is made by Lightwave so they made by different companies, the chances are I would have to use an extra creativity to connect them to one another. Now, if you buy them from the same, if you, if the, if you buy a set, if the, your foot straps came uh, from the same manufacturer as the board, then it will be a lot easier. So why do we, why do we have three openings over here? Well, first of all, we can uh, make adjustments uh, using different set of openings. We can slide the, the straps, well, both of them better be symmetrical. We can slide them forward a little bit or backwards. Why do we need that? If at the end of the session you feel that your shin, the muscles that are in front of your, your, your shins, they are kind of sore and uh, uh, they are tired, which means that usually you can find yourself riding with your toes kind of curled up, that means that uh, your foot straps are positioned too far forward, so you need to slide them back. And on a contrary, if they're positioned too far back, then you'll find yourself riding on the tippy toes, kind of standing on, on your toes. In this case, you should slide them a little bit forward. And that's why you have different, uh, different openings over here. Another reason to have a variety of openings here is we can pivot, we can turn those uh, straps depending on the comfort, depending how comfortable you feel. Because, you know, some people walk with uh, uh, their toes more apart than other people do. So it's really a personal preference. Now, the way to tell, uh, the way to tell what is comfortable for you will be at the end of the session. So if you feel like your, your, your muscles are sore, either front or the back muscles are sore, you can, you can start adjusting. But um, to be honest with you, in the beginning, uh, you're not gonna feel the difference until you start riding up wind. Okay, until you start edging your board, you're not gonna feel much of a difference because your board in the beginning will be flat on the water and you'll be just standing on it. Okay, so uh, the easy answer for you at this point, use the middle ones, use the middle openings, okay, use the openings that are in the middle and uh, you will start adjusting them later on down the road. At the end of the day, it's not that big of a difference, so if your toes are curled up a little bit or your muscles are sore a little bit extra, so you'll fix it a little bit later. Next question, once we've picked uh, the openings over here, I'm going to use the middle one over here and the top one over here, but uh, when you look at the board, you see that um, there are several openings, there are several holes that we can use. Like in this case, I have two, two holes over here and two over here. Okay, we're going to use a, a pair, so we're going to use either the left ones or the right ones. Now, which one is better? The answer is really simple. It's uh, depending on the set of those holes, you can adjust the positioning of the boards of the, of the straps. Either they're going to be closer to one another or further apart. They basically slide along the length of the board um, further apart or closer together. The main criteria, the main reason to, to play with this is uh, it's your height. Like you see, I'm a tall guy, I six, I'm 6'6", six, six. it's 195 centimeters. So usually, let me rephrase, all the times I'm using the outmost openings, okay? The openings that uh, allow me to keep my feet as, as far apart as possible, okay? Because uh, it, it's better for the balance, you know? Maybe in the beginning it could be a, a good starting point for you, because uh, the further the foot straps apart, the more stable you would feel, okay? It's gonna give you more stability. But later on down the road, after you practiced a little bit, you may find yourself um, maybe tired a little bit because it's too far. In this case, you can always make adjustments later on. So bring the screwdriver to the beach with you. And here is one important point. However you choose to mount those uh, foot straps on the board, make sure that everything is symmetrical. So if you choose to install your right strap all the way to the right, make sure that the left one goes all the way to the left. 
Okay, do not mount both of them all the way to one side because in this case you will turn your twin tip symmetrical board into a mutant board. We used to have those mutant boards, boards back in the day. Okay, it's not what these boards are designed for, so make sure that the straps are positioned symmetrically. Same goes for the pivoting, pivoting angle. Okay, if you choose to position this board, at, uh, this strap at this angle, position this foot strap at the same symmetrical angle. Don't point them in the same direction, because, you know, this would be like a directional board, but at some point you're going to have to make a U-turn and ride in the opposite direction, which will make it uncomfortable. Okay, so make sure that the angle is symmetrical, okay? Next part is a handle. Even though it seems like a trivial thing, just two openings, the thing is really symmetrical, uh, it's a good idea to mount the handle, especially if it has a printing on it, some kind of a writing, in a way that you can read it normally when you're standing on the board. Here is the reason. When uh, going gets tough, when you wipe out, when you lose your board, when you get disconnected from your board and uh, waves are crashing, the kite is somewhere, God knows, and you become a little bit disoriented and you need to grab your board and put it on as quickly as possible, it will help you on a subconscious level if your brain can register the, the, the prints in a normal way, in a normal readable uh, way. So even though technically it doesn't matter, you can mount it in, the, in any position, but uh, do mount it the way that you can read it. But actually, you know what, at the end of the day, you don't even need the handle. You can always grab your board by the foot strap or by the edge and carry it around. The only time when you actually need the board, uh, need the handle, is uh, when you uh, jump and take your board off and hold it in your hand. Okay, that's the only time when you actually need a handle. Otherwise, it's a really optional thing. Next, fins. Fins are usually attached to the board by uh, two screws, and it's kind of a straightforward process. Sometimes there could be a spacer, a plastic spacer, like a washer, uh, between the screw heads and the board, just for extra stability, just to protect the board a little bit extra. But the main question is uh, usually the orientation of the fins. Now, in my case, in the case of this board, fins are identical. I have four fins of the same size, of the same shape. And in this case, the only question is, how do I orient them, okay? Should they point in one direction, all four of them? Should they point in the other direction? Should they be symmetrical or symmetrical like this? Well, the answer is here. Uh, they should be symmetrical, and uh, the pointy part of, the, of each fin should be pointing inwards. The reason is really simple. If this is a board and this is the, the fin and I'm moving in that direction, then whatever it is I'm running into, it could be a, a piece of plastic, plastic bag, a, a fishing line, a seaweed, or even if I hit a wood log, a, a branch in, floating in the water, or even if I hit a rock or a boulder, in this case, the fin will bounce off, okay, and I will continue to ride. Okay, I will feel the impact, but it will not catch on to the obstacle. If I position fins like this, with, with the butts uh, facing one another. If I move in that direction, this would be the back fin and the back of the board, then you see this creates sort of a hook. And uh, this will catch seaweed, plastic bags, fishing lines, and you name it. All right? And if I hit something hard, something like a log floating in the water, then it will stop me dead. Okay, I'm gonna trip over, and I don't want this to happen. So position it like this, okay? Both fins should be facing one another with the pointy tips, like that. And here is one more little piece of advice. What I like to do before touching fins, before driving bolts into the fins, I use this uh, thread locker or thread sealer. Uh, this is a paste or a thick liquid that auto mechanics usually use to uh, protect bolts from falling out, from loosening up because of the vibration. Usually one, one drop, one dollop is enough. You can apply it either to the screw, directly to the thread, or you can uh, uh, drop a drop inside the opening on, uh, on a counterpart. What it will do is, uh, in a little while, in a couple of hours, or maybe overnight, it will dry up and it will turn, it will kind of solidify. It will turn into a very thick paste and it will seal the bolt inside of the nut. You'll still be able to undo it, okay, but it, it will keep the bolt inside the thread, preventing it from falling out because of the vibration. It's a very cool thing to do. All right, my friend, I hope it was useful. I hope now you know how to put the board together. So get out there, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. And remember to use a sunscreen.